amongst millions of ordinary people, are the few who have an interest in what exists outside of our little world. If you happen to be one of those few, allow us to share our adventures with you, where we will discover worlds of every shape, sometimes beautiful, sometimes scary, but always fascinating. Let us take you far away from your ordinary life, far from this world, far from everything you know. For some people, taking photos of space from the backyard is a simple task. Although, for others like my wife and I, who live in a city, this is not an easy feat. We reside in Las Vegas, one of the worst places to live when you have a bold adoration for stars. The number one enemy of astronomy, especially astrophotography, clouds an uncontrollable force that does not occur frequently in the desert. Enemy number two, light pollution. Fortunately, although uncontrollable as well, it is escapable. Imagine light pollution as a blurry dome that arches over cities and prevents starlight from shining through. This blurry dome loses its effect gradually as we get farther away from its center. This effect of fluoro illumination is called Boro scale. Our destination is a number 3.5 on the Boro scale. Number 1 would be pitch black views at sea or deep in the desert. And number 9 would be in the centers of big cities. to our favorite spot. As you can see, we're surrounded by mountains, but they're low-lying enough for us to take pictures of the stars as they rise up on the horizon. And this is far enough away from the cities that emit light pollution so that we're able to see more clearly. One major problem for astrophotography would be the planes. Luckily in this spot, there's only about one or two planes that happen to pass over our heads, so that's pretty lucky. Another problem would be the wildlife. Sometimes coyotes, snakes, and even mice try to snoop around here and touch our equipment, so that's definitely another problem that we have here. But other than that, this is the perfect spot for astrophotography. All right, so we have our gear in the car. So let's make sure we mount everything right now because the sun is setting really, really fast and we'll be ready. For the very first episode of Galactic Hunter, we've chosen the target of another world, a gigantic world that would make us feel very tiny. 
Our chosen target world's name is M101, and it is located near the North Star Polaris. Our target today floats within a constellation familiar to everyone, the constellation of Ursa Major, or the Big Dipper. M101, or the Pinwheel Galaxy, is a spiral galaxy viewed from above. This impressive world is 170% the size of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. It was discovered by French astronomer Pierre Michon on March 27, 1781. Shortly after, the famous Charles Messier, after checking Michon's data, decided to officially add the galaxy to his catalog. On February 28, 2006, NASA released a new image of M101 taken by Hubble. This photo was, at the time, the most detailed image of a galaxy ever taken. As you can see, the pinwheel galaxy is not completely symmetrical. The reason for that is the gravitational distortion that small galaxies have in the area on the largest. The guiltiest of them all? The dwarf galaxy NGC 5474, which is the closest to M101 and is gradually tearing the arms of the spiral galaxy with its gravitational force. Planning on going there on vacation? Being 23 million light years away from your town, it would take you more than 400 million years to arrive. And that's if you use the fastest ship ever made. This beautiful star, shining before your eyes, saved the lives of countless people over the centuries. Polaris, or the North Star, is the only star to seemingly never move, and as its name suggests, always directs you north. Among the thousands of stars visible in the night sky, Polaris is the 46th brightest of them all. And that just as Polaris has saved the lives of countless sailors in the past, it will be our guide tonight for our journey to M101. Ready to sail? Hang on, let's go! Boom! We've arrived. I told you it wasn't far. After all, we've only traveled a few light years away. You can't see anything yet, but that's normal. If we installed an eyepiece, you would be able to make out a grayish stain, confirming that we are indeed pointed in the right direction. The reason why the camera is not able to show the galaxy at first glance is because our eyes are more sensitive than the camera itself. We can determine if our placement is perfect by taking a picture with a long exposure. Now that we've attached the camera instead of the eyepiece, we have no idea whether or not we're centered or not. So let's take a one minute exposure to check it out. Suspense. This is our very first image of the galaxy. And as you can see, there is no problem with our equipment and we're right on target. This is our second image. We tried to center the galaxy again, and, look closely, you can now see its companion NGC 5474. The telescope is now all set and ready for hunting. I am now going to install my camera, so I'm going to have to use a different one to continue filming. We will now launch a series of photos until my batteries die. As mentioned before, a problem of astrophotography, besides clouds, is light pollution. Here is a photo of an exposure of 4 seconds in the direction of Las Vegas. After seeing that, you understand that if we had stayed there for imaging, our exposures would have been way too bright and full of noise. Well, the batteries are now dead, so everything is done. Now we only have to edit the photos and hope that we didn't encounter anything, any failures such as thin clouds that could ruin the image. At last, we have our galaxy. It's a great feeling to have captured something that's millions of light years away from our small camera lens on Earth. But there's one last step to do so we can be completely satisfied with our photos. The editing. The editing time can be anywhere between a few hours to several days depending on the target, how many times you scrap and start over, 
or push the software to have as many details as possible. And now, I present our target M101 from the first shot to the final phase. And now, it is your turn to decide what's next. Nebulae are the most fascinating objects in the universe. Nebulae are the mother of stars you see in the night sky. M57, or the Ring Nebula, was formed when a star larger than our sun died 4,000 years ago. The Ring Nebula has a diameter of one light year and is expanding at an incredible rate of 1.5 million kilometers per day. The biggest challenge of this target will be to capture the tiny white dwarf star in its center, which is a remnant of the star that died. Would you rather get closer to our home? The interesting thing about pointing a telescope like ours at the moon is that it allows us to have extraordinary views of the craters. The moon always shows the same face, which would also allow us to admire the landing spots of the various Apollo missions. We certainly cannot see Armstrong's footprint, but could we see something? Like the Earth, the planets in the solar system are constantly orbiting our sun. You've probably already seen several of them when you look up into the night sky, but do not realize what they actually are. By getting closer to one of the bright stars, we may discover that it is actually a planet. That wraps up our first episode of Galactic Hunter. We hope you were as excited as we were hunting the M101 galaxy. If you enjoy this journey, join us again to continue capturing other worlds by voting for the next targets in the comments. Be sure to check out our website and see our previous projects and a link to all of our other videos that we'll be having on this channel.